Oi, Kaka, what do you think of merino wool for cycling clothing? Not many cars around here. Hi, it's Monty from Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal Channel, and in this video I'm going to give a non-inexhaustive account of the differences between merino wool and lycra, or spandex as it's known in the US, as it relates to cycling jerseys. And in the process I'm going to also review this rather fine merino wool cycling jersey sent to me by the kind folk at Vulpine. This comparison of merino wool and lycra is not exhaustive, mainly because I've not done the research and it's entirely based on my own rather limited experience. But hopefully I'll touch on a few things that you'll find useful. So you're no doubt pretty familiar with lycra, the standard material for cycling jerseys and indeed most other cycling clothing these days but perhaps not merino wool so for the purposes of this comparison I'm using this jersey as a test subject. In this video I'll talk about things like comfort, how warm it is, whether it performs well athletically unlike its wearer, a little bit about cost, perhaps most importantly a little bit about what it looks like to wear. That's mainly what we care about with cycling clothes isn't it? If you like videos about road cycling and you'd like to hear more about it from a slightly incompetent and amateurish road cyclist, which is me, please do hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon to be informed when I release a new video. Also, if this video is in any way useful, please do give it a thumbs up. So, Vulpine, the UK-based cycling clothing maker, at the very start of the spring in 2020, sent me two merino wool jerseys to try out, this short-sleeved one, and also a long-sleeved one. Rather unhelpfully, ever since then, the weather has been somewhat warm, and therefore quite difficult to test, certainly the insulation characteristics of the jersey. So I thought, well, we're going on our annual training camp come family holiday, and this time it's in Scotland. You'd think it'd be a bit cooler up here. Turns out, well, I'm wrong. It's actually quite nice weather here in Scotland. But hey-ho, I've committed to making this video now, and there are a few sheep around here that I thought I could interview about their thoughts on wearing wool all year round, and I don't know. Maybe merino wool's meant to keep you cool as well? I guess we'll find out. So I should say, whilst Vulpine did send me these jerseys for free, the opinions in this video are my own. Well, I like to think they're my own. Well, who knows? I'll let you be the judge of it. You should probably take the requisite pinch of salt with whatever comes out of my mouth. Now, whilst the weather hasn't been ideal for testing out a merino wool jersey, I have actually worn this quite a few times over the last few months. So I do feel somewhat qualified to at least give some initial thoughts as to the quality and the overall performance of this Vulpine jersey and hopefully it helps illustrate some of the points that we're going to be talking about in this video about the differences between lycra and merino. Anywho, let's get on with it. I should probably say a few words about what exactly merino wool is. Well, it is wool from a sheep, it's from the merino sheep, which I believe comes from Spain but now is more spread out across the world. Merino wool has a reputation for being a reasonably high performance wool that's used in a lot of sportswear, but I guess also in a lot of premium knitwear, which is not my specialist subject. Lycra on the other hand, at least in terms of wearing it, very much is my specialist subject. Lycra is absolutely a man-made fabric developed by the company DuPont and it comprises a mixture of polyester and elastic, something like that. Anyway, it's a man-made fabric that I think as a cyclist you're pretty familiar with. Of course the irony here is that wool used to be used for all cycling clothing and was phased out because it used to get very heavy when wet, it struggled in the heat. In the course of the modicum of research that I've done for this video I discovered that the World Championship jersey worn by Tommy Simpson sometime in the mid 60s, I think it was 67, was a merino wool jersey. So there's a long linkage between wool, merino wool and cycling. Of course in the intervening period it got phased out in favour of higher performing fabrics such as lycra and it's only in the relatively recent history, say the last 10 or so years, that people have come round to wool, merino wool in particular, as an alternative for making cycling clothing. And in case you're wondering where I am in Scotland, just over the hills over there from Loch Lomond, this glen here is called Glenfruin, which I'm no doubt pronouncing wrong, 
But I must admit, if the weather's nice, the cycling in Scotland is absolutely glorious, and I'm not even in the Highlands. I definitely need to come back. When I do come back, it'll probably be in a full merino skin suit, which sounds to me like it'll do just the job for the Scottish weather. This really isn't Scottish weather. Our first criteria, warmth. Warmth. Now I could look up the science, but I'm pretty sure everyone knows that wool is warm. I guess the question would be for a sport that involves some degree of exertion is quite whether it can keep you cool. Coolness. Now most websites, either selling merino cycling jerseys or promoting merino wool in general, will tell you that it's an active fabric. So it tries to keep you warm in the heat and will cool you down in the no that's not right it keeps you warm in cooler weather and will cool you down in warmer weather to my mind there's only so much that a fabric can do no matter how much of a wonder material it is I could definitely say that this jersey keeps me warm considering it's a pretty lightweight fabric i wouldn't say it's as lightweight as a summer lycra but then it's not designed to be it's certainly a lot lighter than a roubaix style fleece lined lycra which i guess in some respects it matches in terms of keeping you warm. I'll maybe check in towards the end of this ride to see whether it's kept me cool. Aesthetics. I think it's time to extend my selfie stick. You've been watching the video so far, so I'll let you decide whether you think it looks good or not. <sighs> Probably be a little bit careful because I think I'm right next to a military site. For me, I quite like it. I like navy blue in general. The bright yellow zip provides quite a nice contrast, which I think lifts it slightly. It's definitely a more subtle look than your brighter Lycra cycling jerseys. The other jersey that's been sent to me is a grey long sleeve one with a green zipper. That's slightly more unusual I'm not sure you tend to see that many grey cycling jerseys but for me having something that's a little bit more subtle a little less in your face a little less lycra clad warrior is quite handy if you're looking for going to the cafe mid-ride or pub even at the end of the ride and you don't want to look like a trussed up lycra sausage to be honest is my main aim in life in addition to the nice bright yellow zip we've got some attractive yellow detailing on the back the vulpine logo up at the collar area on the pocket at the back as well pairing it with lycra it's definitely the case to say that if you are after one of those really bright multicolored, intricate design jerseys with color fade and whatnot lycra is always going to win I think in that scenario merino wool i think you're probably more limited to quite simplistic designs generally more subtle colors that said if you look around it does it's not too hard to find quite bright bold single color merino wool jerseys so you can certainly make it match whatever color scheme that you're aiming to go for on the bike of course these guys over here they've gone from a pretty boring naturalistic color scheme well they need to have a word, don't they? Fit. 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 So let's talk a little bit about fit. Now, to be honest, merino wool jerseys can probably fit as well as a lycra jersey. In this case, I'd say this is a slightly more relaxed fit than your more sporty, ultra tight, aerodynamic lycra fits. It's longer at the back as you'd expect from a cycling jersey in order to cover your rump when you are cycling. It also has the rubberized strip at the back there to hold it in position on your backside and prevent it riding up. It's fair to say that Lycra will have more elasticity naturally. Naturally, it's a man-made material. Lycra will have more elasticity than merino wool on its own. It's at this point I can deploy the fact that I very recently learned that elastane is in fact the generic name here in the UK for Lycra. In the US, it's spandex and Lycra itself is a brand name version owned by DuPont. As I said, Lycra has more elasticity than merino wool and therefore will generally, I think, do a better job at moulding to the contours of your body, which, to be honest, may not be the thing that you are most after. I think most normal people who are non-athletes on the bike are looking for that mix of performance and looking smart without looking, again, I think as I mentioned at the top of that hill, like an overly trussed up Lycra sausage. Comfort. 
Now in terms of comfort, I'd say that that's really a combination of all the other factors that I've been talking about in this video, but I've certainly found it comfortable on all the rides that I've worn it on. It certainly doesn't feel restrictive, feels extremely lightweight, got huge freedom of movement. It's one of the best things you can say about it is that you really don't notice that you're wearing it. Ideally, you really want to feel like you're wearing some clothes. To be honest, that's what cycling clothing is all about. I'm not worrying too much about whether your clothes are impacting your experience. Oh, look at these midges. Smelliness. Next criteria, smell, which I'm not sure that smell is necessarily a criteria. Do merino wool jerseys get more smelly than lycra ones? This is one of these characteristics of merino wool that the merino wool lobbying industry will tell you is a major plus point. The idea being that merino wool has certain properties that means it doesn't get smelly through repeated wear. And to be fair, they may well have a point. I've been wearing this jersey, admittedly not today, but on other occasions over the course of a couple of days, purely for the purposes of scientific research, and it really doesn't honk the next day. Quick interlude from Future Monty. It's now the day after the day yesterday when I was doing the majority of this video and wearing the same top. I can safely confirm that you can absolutely wear this merino wool jersey for a second day. I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't really smell of roses and primroses. Most people don't come up close to you to give you a good sniff. All you're really looking for is not to be absolutely stinking the place out when you go in a cafe stop. I think merino wool certainly ticks the box in terms of avoiding unnecessary smellage. Now to be honest I've not had a major issue with this with lycra either but as a man-made material lycra is a bit more susceptible to being a bit smelly. I've certainly noticed for base layers that are made out of man-made materials similar to lycra they can certainly whiff a bit after a day's use. Next characteristic when we're comparing lycra with merino wool for cycling jerseys is features. Is features? It's plural. Are features. Features. Now there's only so many features that a cycling jersey can have no, we're not talking about, you know, your Castelli, Perfetto, foul weather type characteristics. This is just a standard, either short sleeved or long sleeved jersey. And I found that for this Vulpine one, it has all the characteristics that I would expect from a cycling jersey. So we have a zip that runs all the way down our standard three pockets at the back. We have some reflective detailing at the top of each of the pockets helpful I guess in dim weather conditions. The pockets themselves are pretty sturdy. Here I've packed in my rain jacket. I've got a mini pump here. Really pocket is as pocket does. Similar to many Lycra jerseys there's a small zipped compartment that can accommodate a key or other valuable. I guess when it comes to pockets one of the concerns that I might have had not wearing merino wool jerseys is that they don't hold the contents of the pockets quite as firmly quite as firmly, quite as firmly the contents as say a Lycra one. Well, I think it's fairly safe to say these seem pretty well engineered and are holding the contents that I've put into them pretty nicely. It's probably not something that you're going to make a decision between Merino wool and Lycra in choosing your next cycling jersey. Who knows? Maybe you're putting weights in your pockets in order to train as you go uphill. <laughs> Quality. Quality is going to vary across merino wool jerseys in the same way that it does across lycra ones. You can get a cheap lycra jersey that will fall apart. You can get a well-made one that will last you for years. So in this segment, I'm just going to focus on this, the Vulpine Alpine jersey. And to be honest, the quality to me, and I'm no tailor, seems pretty good. You know, the zip is a nice quality zip. All of the seams seem 
all of the seams seem all of the seams seem pretty well constructed and I've certainly got no concerns that it's going to pull apart or fray I'm not sure whether it's easy to see the seams here pretty tidy neat stitching here all in all I think this feels like a quality garment I guess the most significant concern I had about merino wool versus lycra when it comes to a cycling jersey is sort of how hard wearing it is but most importantly how it washes wash performance my experience in the past with a pair of merino socks is that I put them in the wash once and they shrank down to the size of my children's socks so I did have some trepidation when this jersey went into the wash for the first time I can happily report that over multiple washes admittedly it has gone in the delicates wash I think probably 30 degrees centigrade but we've seen no shrinkage it seems to be the same size now at the risk of sounding like a slightly unreconstructed male my wife asked me just before coming out on this particular ride whether this jersey still fit because it turns out that the last time that she put it in the wash she accidentally did so at 50 degrees C and you can't really see because you've got no idea how big it was to begin with but I can confirm that it hasn't shrunk at all now one thing I would mention about merino wool and specifically this one is it, it hasn't bobbled as such, but it's certainly a slightly more woolleny textured finish after having been through a few washes versus when you first get it. I'll show you the grey long sleeve jersey, which I've not worn at all yet, and that's slightly smoother in terms of its texture right now. This one, as I say, it's not bobbly, but you can definitely feel a slightly different texture to the material. But to be honest, it's just part of the look of wearing a merino wool jersey. Finally, on the subject of washing cycling clothing, strictly speaking, if you read the instructions on how to wash and look after lycra in order to maintain its life, to be honest, you're meant to do the same sorts of things. It's meant to go in at 30 degrees on a delicate wash. In an ideal world, I think the likes of Rafa and Castelli would have you hand washing all of their garments in order to ensure their longevity, but in the real world, that's not going to happen. It's probably fair to say that Lycra has far less of a risk of catastrophic fog ups when it comes to washing, i.e. I think at some point if you put this in a super hot wash it probably is going to shrink. You've got a little bit more leeway with Lycra but if you're careful there's not really much in it. So far certainly when it comes to this particular piece of merino cycling jersey kit there's no real difference between how I look after this versus the Lycra one, or well, how my wife does. I know how to use a washing machine. Price. So what about cost? I think it's fair to say the Merino wool cycling jerseys do tend to be more expensive than a lot of cycling jerseys, but I think that's because you don't tend to get budget Merino cycling jerseys. These Volpine Alpine jerseys are pretty representative of the sorts of prices that you'll have to pay. They're set at the premium end of the scale, they're not ultra expensive like Castelli and Assos. But if you're thinking in the same ballpark as Rafa, Stolen Go, Le Col, that sort of price. So the long sleeved Alpine jersey is £130. This one is £100. Yes, I know you certainly can buy high quality Lycra jerseys for less than that. And for choice, I probably would. But if you're going to treat yourself to a nice jersey, then I think there's probably not a lot in it between a nice Lycra jersey and a nice Merino wool jersey. Turning to the subject of comfort and technical performance of the fabric, it's somewhat muggy and I've been pootling around on the bike filming this video for about an hour and a half. And really the experience has been quite nice, I haven't overheated nor have I felt underheated. On the bike it feels quite cool and then as I'm stopped here I'm neither sweating really nor am I particularly cooling down overly quickly. On this very limited technical testing I'm quite impressed. It's a uh, 
It's a pretty comfortable jersey. You don't immediately have to jump to the conclusion that a merino wool jersey is going to be overly warm, even for nice, mild summertime rides. Now, one of the characteristics I did want to test for this merino wool jersey was how it performed in the wet. Ironically, here we are in Scotland and I've not had the opportunity. The truth is though, for a short sleeve jersey, I don't go out of my way to get wet. If it does start raining and I'm wearing a lycra short sleeve jersey, then I'm just gonna put on a rain jacket and I'd expect to do the same with this one. Performance in the wet is not really something that I care overly about for a merino wool jersey. If it's gonna be really bad, then to be honest, I'm gonna go right to the technical end of the lycra scale and go for a foul weather jersey like the Castelli Perfetto, my favorite. And really that's not the market that these merino wool jerseys are trying to operate in. Conclusion. That concludes my non-in-depth comparison of merino wool and lycra as it relates to cycling jerseys. Hopefully you found the odd bit useful. It also concludes my high level overview of this Vulpine Alpine short sleeve jersey. If you like the look of it and you fancy buying one for yourself then please do click the link in the description below. I did have an intention on also reviewing the long sleeved one as well but to be honest the weather hasn't played ball in a good way. I'll have to save that for a future video. To be fair I think the key difference between that one and this one is that this one has short sleeves, the other one has long sleeves. You do the maths. Maybe I'll try the long sleeve jersey out in wintry Derbyshire riding conditions so we can see how merino wool performs in that sort of of riding environment. This being a standard non-researched off-the-cuff video I will no doubt have missed out some very important characteristics about the differences between merino wool and lycra. If you have encountered them and you want to share them with the cycling world at large or at least a very modest portion of it please do share them in the comments below this post. Now I haven't done huge numbers of clothing reviews on this vlog but I think if you want to see my one about the Castelli Perfetto I've mentioned it at least once in this video, you can click up here. On a slightly different topic, I've just rebuilt my Trek Domain road bike down here, stripped it down to its frame, gave it a good clean and rebuilt the whole thing. If you want to watch that video series, then you can click, I don't know, somewhere around here, there'll be a button and you should probably click it. If you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe button for more videos. I've been Monty, your adopted Scottish road cycling correspondent. This has been Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal Channel. I'll see you in the next video.